Hello everyone I hope you all are very well and safe my name is Vara Kunjal and I am studying MSc physics at the Maharaja Sanjay Rao University of Baroda and today I am presenting here one of the most beautiful and interesting topic of the astrophysics the formation of solar system but before i am going to my actual topic i want to give you a brief introduction of our solar system so let's start the journey of our beautiful solar system first is the sun the sun is type g2v yellow dwarf star and the age of sun is approximately 4.6 billion years and the distance of sun from the galactic center is 26000 light years and the radius of sun is approximately 695700 kilometers and the mass of sun is approximately 1.9884 into 10 to the power 30 kilograms all planets are orbiting around the sun by nuclear fusion reaction sun produces a lot of energy sun produces a 3.846 into 10 to the power 26 joules per meter square energy per second now the layers of sun there are six layers of sun first is core where the nuclear fusion reaction takes place and the temperature of core is 15.7 into 10 to the power 6 kelvins second is the radiation zone which is the temperature 2 into 10 to the power 6 kelvins third is the convection zone which is the temperature 6273 kelvins fourth is the photosphere which is the temperature 5800 kelvins fifth is a chromosphere which is a temperature 6000 to 50000 kelvins and last one is a corona which is a temperature 1 into 10 to the power 6 kelvins now there are a total 8 planets 205 moons and solar debris are present in our solar system in eight planets are categorized in a two type first is a terrestrial planets which are also known as rocky planets or inner planets second is chobian planets which are also known as a gas or ice giants or outer planets there are four terrestrial planets first is mercury second is venus third is earth and fourth is mars and four chobian planets first is jupiter second is saturn third is uranus and fourth is neptune here jupiter and saturn both are gas giants and uranus and neptune both are ice giants now moons moons are the natural satellites of planets which orbiting around the planets that is the least of all moons of each planet mercury have no moon venus have no moon earth have one moon mars have two moons jupiter have 79 moons saturn have 82 moons uranus have 27 moons and neptune have a 14 moons and the biggest moon of the solar system is ganymede which is the moon of jupiter now what is solar debris solar debris are the material which was failed to become a planet at the time when solar system formed in our solar system there are three types of debris first is asteroid second is a meteoroids and third is comets now what is asteroids asteroids are a very large sized rocky object which are orbit around the sun most of the asteroids are orbiting around the sun between the orbit of mars and orbit of jupiter which is also known as asteroid belt that is the image of asteroid belt and that is the image of most famous asteroid vesta now meteoroids meteoroids are a small pebble size object which are the small pieces of asteroids or comets they are also known as fireballs because when they enters in our earth's atmosphere because of the friction of atmosphere they get burned and become shiny so if we see them in our night sky they are look like a shooting star now comets comets are a cosmic snowballs of frozen gas rock and dust which are orbiting around the sun in a hyperbolic orbit that's the image of comet there are two reservoirs of comets in our solar system first is a kuiper belt which is located at the distance 10 to the power 3 astronomical unit from the sun and it contains 10 to the power 9 to 10 to the power 10 ic bodies there is the artistic image of kuiper belt and second is oort cloud which is located at the distance 10 to the power 5 astronomical unit from the sun which contains approximately 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 15 ic bodies this is the artistic image of oort cloud now our solar system is really very large so 
how the whole solar system was formed how the terrestrial planets were formed how the all jovian planets were formed and why they have a giant like structure why the terrestrial planets have a rocky surface while jovian planets have a gaseous or icy surface why the outer planets are bigger than the inner planets there are lots of question and now i am coming to my actual topic the formation of solar system do you know who was the first person who tried to explain the origin of solar system he was one greatest mathematician whose name is rene descartes rene descartes was the first person who proposed a model for origin of solar system in his book le monde which he wrote in 1632 and 1633 According to him the universe was filled with the vortices and swirling particles his model introduced three different kinds of elements which are luminous transparent and opaque sun and planets were made up by these all elements by condensation and by contraction he explained the circular motion of planet he was right track with the condensation and contraction but it was not explained in scientific way and according to modern science now we know that the matter is not behaves in this manner after him immanuel kant gives his theory in 1755 he was the first person who proposed about the nebular theory so what is nebula Nebula is the giant cloud of gas and dust in a space. Some nebulae are comes from the gas and dust thrown out by the explosion of dying star like supernova. Other nebulae are the region where the star forming takes place and there are five types of nebula. First is emission nebula, second is reflection nebula, third is dark nebula, fourth is planetary nebula and fifth is supernova remnant. now according to his assumption a nebula in the center of which the sun is placed due to the gravitational force the rest of the matter will rotate around the sun because of the influence of mutual collision one of the disk will be formed where all particles are rotating around the sun next step is condensation which shows that the matter in a disk condenses into some larger bodies which become a planets in future but he was failed to explain about mean distance of planets from the sun mass distribution and mainly the distribution of angular momentum after him pierre simon laplace He modified Kant's theory in 1796. According to him, the sun is surrounded by the hot gaseous atmosphere while gradually cooling. Thus, the contraction occurs, and further processes like condensation of matter occurs, and it forms a planet. But he was also failed to explain the angular momentum distribution. In other words, he was unable to solve the angular momentum problem. now after him christian olaf bernhard birkeland he was first tried to explain the origin of solar system by using magnetic effect in 1912 but his theory could not be maintained because of the solar magnetic field is not strong enough to produce the desired effect after him the berlitz gave his theory which was quite same as the birkeland's theory but instead of magnetic field he was taken electric field on account but these both theories were failed to solve the angular momentum problem after him hans alfven comes and he gave his theory and according to him the force exerted by the sun's magnetic moment on ionized matter can be much larger than the gravitational force on matter also he mentioned that the distribution of angular momentum from surrounding cloud is possible so he tried to solve the angular momentum problem he explained the formation of outer planet well 
but can't explain the formation of inner planet. Also, according to his mechanics, inner planet has lower density than outer planets, but it is not true in real. After him, Carl Frederick von Weisschaker, he gave his theory in 1944 and his theory is known as protoplanet theory. His theory can be divided into the different parts corresponding to the different stages in the development of solar system. First is the formation of gaseous disk around the sun. Second is the formation of solar system from the vortices in this disk. And third is the condensation process. Now. There are many other alternative theories which are developed to overcome the previous theories mistakes or drawbacks. They are first the Chamberlain Moulton model, second is Tidal theory, third is Late Latent scenario, fourth is interstellar cloud theory, fifth is Hollis theory. 6th is Kuiper's theory, 7th is Whipple's theory, 8th is Urey's theory, 9th is solar fission theory, 10th is protoplanet theory, and 11th is Cameron's hypothesis, and last one is capture theory. Now, what is solar nebular disk theory? This theory is very useful and very good theory to dis explain the origin of solar system. 4.6 billion years ago, solar system formed from the giant molecular cloud in galaxy. In early time, this huge cloud of molecular hydrogen have a mass of 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 6 solar masses. Within this, clouds have a denser region or core where the solar form star formation take place. Proto-sun formation, star formation actually take place from some processes like the shock wave from nearby supernova triggers the gravitational collapse on a cloud core. Material falls towards the center of the core under its own self-gravity and massive object begin to grow at the center of cloud which is heated by gravitational potential energy of the infalling material. The object become a self luminous which is known as protosun. Here there is a one nebula and the shock wave passes through it. After this the gravitational collapse will start and by this collapsing a protosun will form. This is the image of protosun. Now but central pressure and temperature are not high enough to ignite a nuclear fusion. But as gas cloud collapses, a temperature rises because of potential energy convert into the kinetic energy. By this relation, if potential energy decreases, the kinetic energy will increase because of the conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy. And now by this equation, if kinetic energy will increase, the temperature will also increase because the kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature. Now some of some of energy is radiated away thermally, but the solar nebula becomes hottest near the center or protosun. Now, eventually protosun becomes so hot that ignite a fusion in its core. Now, disk formation. As collapse occurs, the nebula spins up to conserve angular momentum and disk will form because of the gravitational collapse of nebula. See this figure. Gravitational acceleration g is equal to gm upon r square is directed radially to the center. We can easily see this in figure. And r omega square is the perpendicular to the rotational axis. So radial component is given by r omega square sine phi. So net radial components of acceleration is given by a is equal to gm upon r square minus r omega square sine phi 
8 pole phi is equal to 0 so net radial component of acceleration is given by gm upon r square and at equator phi is equal to 90 so net radial component of acceleration is given by g minus r omega square is equal to gm upon r square minus r omega square now we all know that the force proportional to the gravitational acceleration and according to this both equations the acceleration on equator is less than the acceleration on pole because of the term r omega square sine phi is minus from the gm square upon r sorry gm upon r square in equation of acceleration at the equator so from pole material compresses towards the equator and disk should be formed at a point where g is equal to r omega square contraction should be stopped now steps of disk formation if angular velocity is increases the disk should be formed in the last stage there is a very high angular velocity and disk should be formed and at the center of this disk protosun is shown here now i am playing one video for our better understanding from orion's belt in the blade of the hunter's sword is a jeweled cloud known as the orion nebula Space here is littered with small globs of gas and dust. These are protostars, baby stars in the making, stellar cocoons, cosmic tadpoles. They form in galactic nurseries like Orion from clouds of gas and dust mingled with the ashes of earlier stars that have died and exploded. But like all newborns, the young star faces a perilous future. Buried inside this dusty cocoon, where astronomers can't see with regular telescopes, a secret star is being born. As the baby star tries to burn its way out of the cloudy egg that sheltered and birthed it, radiation from powerful stars nearby eats away the cocoon from the outside. Too much outside radiation can burn away not just the cocoon, but the disk around the new star, leaving the star naked and alone. If the disk survives, it could make planets, first by electrical forces as particles randomly collide and stick, then by gravity as clumps attract each other. As a planet forms, it will scour its orbit of dust, leaving a telltale gap like the grooves in a record. Recently, astronomers using the new ALMA radio telescope have made the most detailed picture yet of what might be planets being born. They found dark grooves scoring a disk around a star known as HL Tauri, some 450 light years from here. The disk is about 22 billion miles across, about four times the size of the realm of the planets in our own solar system. So, in this video, we can see that the evidence of this solar nebula disk theory first is the Orion Nebula when new star is born and second is T Tauri protoplanetary nebula. Now, as we saw in video, condensation process play an important role in the formation of planet. So, what is the condensation process? Formation of planet requires seeds. Seeds are also known as grains. The process by which seeds were grown is called condensation. The solid or liquid particles are formed by the condensation of gas particles. Condensation is a temperature dependent process. When temperature is low, the atoms or molecule would solidify. Here, temperature variation in solar nebula is given by T is equal to 631 by r to the power 0.77 and the ice line or frost line 
is situated where the temperature become 273 kelvins today frost line is at approximately 5 astronomical unit from the sun in a previous slide we show that the condensation process take place rapidly where the temperature is low so according to this equation t is dependent on r and there is frost line where temperature becomes 273 kelvins after this frost line area of outer planets are starts and because of low temperature outer planets are grow rapidly as compared to the inner planets because of a temperature t is greater than 400 kelvins the inner planets mostly made by silicates and materials but at the temperature t is less than 30 kelvins the outer planets mostly made by silicates and ice now accretion process accretion is the growth of grains through collisions which is also called the planet building process accretion proceed in a two ways first is the collision due to the geometric cross section or a direct impact on seeds second is the collision due to the gravitational accretion here object from the geometric accretion are called planet azimuths act as seeds for planet formation second step is after a few million years a planet azimuths had grown to few kilometer size because of the collisions with each other third step is after this collision become a destructive make a further growth more difficult because here the geometric accretion cross section becomes low and fourth step is after this the gravitational accretion begins to dominate and then this accretes planet azimuth to form a protoplanets now terrestrial planet formation accretion in the central plane of solar nebula can account for the growth of planets from the interstellar grains in the inner region of the solar nebula close to the sun because of the higher temperature it would vaporize icy and organic grains leaving only silicate grains to form a protoplanets sorry to form the planet azimuths which eventually merge to form a terrestrial planets now jovian planet formation there are two hypotheses to explain the formation of outer planets first is core creation theory and second is disk instability theory but core creation theory is good theory than disk instability theory to describe the jovian planet formation now first step is at larger distance where the nebula was cool organic and icy grains would condense and this would be combined with the silicates to form the core of giant planets core of the giant planets grown faster than the terrestrial planets at some point the growing cores of giant planets were become sufficiently massive to be begin capturing hydrogen and helium directly from the nebula and because of the lower temperature in the outer planet zone the giant planets were able to retain the gas and continuous to grow even larger important graphs in this graph we see that the temperature decreasing with in uh, distance increasing and this graph we can see that the density of planet and according to this graph the density of earth is very large and density of saturn is very small now last stage is clearance of debris clearance of debris is the last stage of wall process 
This was done by the scattering process. Here the terrestrial planets are too small to check the object out of the solar system so they can scatter object to Jupiter encountering orbits where the Jupiter will quickly dispose of them. Here the giant planets are too large and also their gravitational field is too strong because of this there are they are eject the debris out of the solar system, maybe in Kuiper belt or old cloud. Now, unsolved fact of the solar nebular disk theory. First, there is a problem with the excess tilt of planets because according to this theory, all planets have the same excess tilt but it is not true. Second is a formation time scale of outer planets. The time scale predicted by this theory to form outer planet are larger than the actual time scale. And formation of planet azimuths is not well explained by this theory. And last is the orbital migration of giant planet. The orbital migration of giant planets is not explained that why Jupiter has an inward, inward migration and most uh, all planets have an inward or outward migration. Now, these all are the stuff and this uh, very beautiful theory, sorry very beautiful, no, very useful theory to explain the origin of solar system and uh, so here I am give you a reference which I used to make this presentation and at last thank you to hear me.